Alright, so in today's video, I'm just going to explain the PG-7 V, I guess it would be, Warhead. It's the classic one for the RPG-7 weapon system. In this case, it's a Chinese version. <clears throat> so it's the uh, Type 69 A1, uh, A1. It's the Type 69-1. If I'm not mistaken. So I'm just making this video mainly because <clears throat> I always see people talking about these and getting it wrong. So and also because whenever you see them in a movie and somebody's actually loading it right with this here, um they also get it wrong because if you see this you're not going to be able to fire the actual RPG out the tube normally this when you're getting it <coughs> is wrapped in a cardboard tube and it covers it including a rubber spacer in the back so there's an extension that goes onto the bottom of this that's just a uh, looks like a cardboard tube inside that cardboard tube is basically this as a main part and <clears throat> there's smokeless powder and a basically ignition charge that's inside also the smokeless powder they call it smokeless powder but it's actually in strips say you were to compare, compare cordite to something you would compare it to spaghetti because that's what it looks like really thin piece of spaghetti um, these would more be like linguine or fettuccine if you were to try to compare it and the strips are run basically fills up the whole gap that's here with the tube and they're tied on one where the elastic is the elastic one where the tape is and another two spots just to hold it in place cardboard tube is over that <clears throat> what this is is a expelling charge so once it ignites this is what launches it out of the tube and at the same time, it's the fins for the warhead. So as you see, it's there. You're able to screw into the bottom like that. And that's how you do it usually when you're... They aren't together in their pack in the uh, bags and stuff. So you just screw it on completely gets to the end, it's tight, you load the whole thing into your launcher. <clears throat> Take it off because it's way too big for this. Anyways, so this doesn't roll off the table, I'll be happy. Alright, so when this finally fires, as it comes out of the launcher, all the tail unfolds on it and it stabilizes the rocket. In the manual it tells you you need 8 inches of clearance. It's basically because of this. As soon as it comes out of the tube and opens up like this, anything that's within 8 inches of your rocket is going to impact it and cause it to go off target. So it fires out of the launcher, it opens up, and if you look at the shape of these, so it's on it's asymmetric, one side's flat, the other side's. And if you look at the back of these, as it's coming out, you're getting pressure off of this side and off of this side. So it's turning the motor or the whole RPG's turning. Well, the PG is turning in the air and <clears throat> that's what stabilizes it initially problem is with one of these rockets and in this case it is a rocket because these are nozzles and this is a rocket motor so I'll show it to you later but the problem is that a shaped warhead or shaped charge doesn't like to spin 
if you're hitting a target with a spinning shaped charge, it's much less efficient than one that isn't spinning. So the faster you spin on your rocket, the less efficient your rocket's uh, charge is going to be. The uh, shape charge. It's just a physics how it works. It's I'm sure there's somebody out there explaining exactly why it does that, but <clears throat> it's just the case there. So we'll go into the next step of this. So this is like I said, once it fires out, this is basically what's controlling everything. Inside here, which I could take it apart now also. It's a little noisy, but it's empty here, but the piece is normally there's a solid rocket engine in here with a uh, center core removed basically so it's not a solid piece in the middle is a hole going right through and at the bottom of this is an igniter for it the igniter basically relies on the <clears throat> uh, acceleration so when it's fired out using the base charger or the expelling charge um, in that little part there is basically uh, it's a primer of sorts with a spring so it sets back and hits a priming a firing pin which ignites the a delay and then the ignition charge for the rocket motor this delay and everything takes about 11 meters away from the front end of the launcher so <clears throat> it gives you uh, enough distance so that when the rocket engine or motor ignites it doesn't burn the user if you were to fire it directly out of the tube with a rocket it would burn you so to avoid that they have the charge and then the rocket setting off at around 11 meters away from the fire The interesting thing about the rocket motor, first off, is that the nozzles are ahead of the fuel. Uh, usually you see the rocket at the back, but because of the way this is made, that can't be done. So you've got the rocket nozzle here. The second thing that's interesting is has to do with the... Um, <clears throat> has to do with the way the, like I said, the shape charge works. Once that rocket ignites, as you could see, or you probably won't see it very clearly, you could see the holes for the rockets. Anyways, these are not straight in line. They've actually got an angle on them. So in this case, the angle is like that. So if that's the case, while it's firing and pushing it forward, it's also giving it spin in this direction. This small amount of spin in this direction slows down the spin that this is, has imparted in it. So now you're firing and now your rocket's in. It's trying to spin it one way. This one's trying to spin it the other way. So it's actually slowing down the spin on your rocket. Now, because it slowed down the spin on your rocket, it is able to be more efficient. So the shape charge could actually work as efficiently as it possibly can. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the actual liner in this one here. I don't know why they got rid of it. Obviously, they removed the explosive in that, but I don't see why any of the other stuff was important to not put back in. So I can't show you how that works. But normally back here, there's another fuse. Here's the second part of the fuse that's here. That one there comes with a 
um, self-destruct, which at about a 900 meters, just a little bit past 900 meters, this blows up. So that, <clears throat> I guess you don't have any, if you miss your vehicle or whatever, it could blow up before. It doesn't just stay live. Also, if something tends to be about 900 meters away from you, you could fire and have it blow up over their heads like people-wise. Certain ones are better for that because the explosive actually has shrapnel in it. So it's both an anti-tank weapon and anybody standing around the tank could get killed by it. Other ones are just heat rounds, so that doesn't do anything for it. As you see, it's aluminum. And normally there's another aluminum, well, another piece inside that's also conductive, so basically it conducts electricity. Reason for that is because what we got here and underneath the little cap, which I could remove the thing in total, but I'm not going to take the cap off, I don't think, because it's nothing, it just looks the same but smaller. Um, the piece that's here is, actually I guess I could do the... <clears throat> Why not? And you just see that. This is a piezoelectric or piezoelectric um, generator. Like what you see in those little uh, joke lighters and actual lighters. When you click it, it makes a little spark. Same thing here. Here you have the uh, piezoelectric, piezoelectric element or piezoelectric element. And if it's crushed, it creates an electrical charge. That charge basically goes through basically your ground on the outside. And on the inside cone is the other, I guess you would call it the positive, but we're not going to go into that. And it travels down the cone in the spacer and it sets off the explosive that's at the bottom in the, um, the second part of the fuse. There's videos showing how that works. If you really want to look it up and get an easier explanation for it with actual picture of the stuff, you can. It'd be much better than listening to me talk about this with no actual parts. So <clears throat> that leads to one interesting little issue with these so your cone like I said because that's screwed into it that's like the grounding one and then on the inside there's your other wire which is uh, separated with non uh, conductive material so you have basically two cones in here riding along very close to each other and not touching so that they don't short out which causes the Thing I wanted to get to about this. The a way they figured out could actually stop, I think it was about 50% of things from working, was to get chain link fence and other objects that when this thing had to go through, if it impacted here and dented it, it would dent the two pieces together. So when it impacted, it would short out here instead of actually going to the explosive, uh, to the rest of the fuse. This would protect tanks, and that's why you would see, and you see it still on the new tanks driving around. You've got like a slate armor in that that helps with certain, it sets off explosives, but at the same time it will also dent these, which will keep them from exploding once it hits the vehicle. Obviously if front end hits and it explodes, it's off the vehicle, so the distance makes it less ideal for actual puncturing or breaking through penetrating the vehicle so it sort of works for that there's a video on my Twitter feed actually and you could see the um, you could see a bunch of tests where they're doing that and they're just firing the thing to see how it works and uh, I think that's pretty much it that I could talk about for this like I said if you've seen a movie this thing here is not covered up it means that basically it's like one of these things here they bought it for the movie but it would be much better to see them covered up in that. It would make it more realistic for anyone watching. But it doesn't look as cool, so they don't do it. Also, at the back end here, there's a hole in the middle. Uh, that has a uh, tracer element in it. 
so it's able to uh, you're able to see it go down range and you see some videos where you actually see that also flame goes through there and that's where it ignites in here now the pin you see here is a alignment pin because if you've seen the RPGs the underneath of them is where the primer is so you have your where your pistol grip is goes to a firing pin and hits a primer here this primer has got an L-shaped hole and it sprays the flame out the back and that's how you ignite your original charge that means if it fires and it doesn't come under the tube it's not going to ignite the rocket and it's definitely not going to ignite the or set off the uh, self-destruct so if you're firing it goes click don't have to throw everything away you just have to try it again if it doesn't work remove the whole thing and put another one in so yeah the only thing that's connected in the tube is a firing pin that will ignite the booster so if that doesn't go off it's a dud also unless it's been modified because of the way the fuse is if you're running without the cap on it the safety cap if you're running around with it and you hit the ground with it it shouldn't explode there is modifications where they take the delay element off so that could cause a problem for you so you might make it more dangerous but <clears throat> in standard usage there's not a problem with that and with that I think I've got all I could possibly talk about there's not much else to talk about on these things here uh, I'm assuming this is quantity or type of explosive I was told by someone who speaks Chinese that that meant break but I'm assuming it means explode or explosive once again anyone who speaks Chinese properly and knows munitions it would be nice to get an actual answer from them because this person like I said was not somebody who could talk about this they could just talk about the direct meaning of it so something to do with break or broken was a word this one here was and this was black I don't know what the black 94 is. I don't know if that's a weight of explosive in it or that's whatever, or that's a year. I really don't know for the markings on here. The Russian ones are different, obviously. And um, I guess that's it. So anybody who does have the answer for that, I'll be uh, happy to hear it in the comment section below. So with that, I hope you guys found it somewhat interesting. This, I hope it's explained some of the actual uh, misunderstandings about the RPG system at least the 7, the 2 is completely different the 2 is more like a Panzerfaust but still works with the same idea of one of these igniting something in the back but there's no fin on it, it's just a box of black powder or a, a tube of black powder anyways that's it for that one other interesting thing is because of the way this works and because of the tail section that's on here when you're firing into the wind or with a crosswind um, the rocket will actually go in the opposite direction of the wind and the reason that works that way there is say you're firing and this is flying through the air you've got basically a big weather vane on the back of it and the one's pushing on it this direction it's gonna point it that direction and while the rockets burning it will actually go in this direction Once a rocket stops burning, it's just going to coast and be pushed with the wind. Which, as you can see, it could cause problems for somebody aiming. If you don't know how your wind is and you don't know how long your rocket's burning for. So a lot of the actual manual is 
basically teaching you how to aim with this. So yes, a crosswind will take it and Anyway, sorry about the sound again. I'm sure it's really annoying on camera. So this is fired at the beginning before the rock ignites, so it's 11 meters. If there's a wind coming from the side, it will go with the wind, the rocket. So it will be pushed with the wind slightly. Obviously, that's not a very long period of time, so it probably doesn't affect it much. Once a rocket kicks in and the wind's blowing again, it will actually uh, weathercock into the wind and go the opposite direction of the wind which is counterintuitive for most people who shot rifles and anything that doesn't have that. And then once a rocket burns out on it, it returns back to its basically being pushed by the wind, even if it's sideways like that. So it does have a strange pattern, and it is a difficult toy apparently to fire at distance. Anyways, now I think that's all I could talk about. And... Uh, Hope you enjoyed this, or it turned into a very long video, I didn't expect it to be 21 minutes, but hope you got some answers, hope it's a lot easier to understand now, and um, if there's any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section. Thanks for watching.